Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create your very own pixel art canvas using JavaScript. Now this project is perfect for beginner to intermediate developers who want to build something interesting with the HTML5 canvas. And before jumping into the code, I wanna show you what this canvas can do. The first and most obvious feature of this pixel art canvas is the ability to choose a color just like this, and then you can start drawing on the canvas. So you got this basic functionality. You're also able to control click in order to set the color as to whichever cell you just clicked on. Now you can continue on with that existing color. You're also able to uh, toggle this guide on and off as we can see. And an added bonus of using Canvas for this project is the ability to right click and save image as. And the last function of this Canvas is gonna be the ability to simply clear it. I can press clear and okay, and now it's all gone. All right, let's jump into VS Code. Okay, so right here, I've got this index HTML and we're gonna be building the pixel art canvas from scratch, all right? So I've linked up both a CSS file and a JavaScript file right here. And I'm using the defer attribute to make sure the JavaScript is only executed once the document has been loaded to avoid errors with uh, documents not being found and so on. Okay. Now, you can see here inside the main.css, I've just included some basic styles for the background, the text color and the font, but other than that, it is completely empty. And the same goes for the JavaScript file, it is empty. All right, so the way it's gonna work is, I'm gonna take you through the HTML first, then the CSS briefly, and then lastly, the JavaScript, all right? So when it comes to the HTML for this pixel art canvas, we're gonna begin by creating a new div, and this div right here is gonna contain both the canvas and the guide, which is simply just the grid from the beginning of today's video. So you may have seen the guide, which is like I said, the grid here, I can toggle it on and off. So it's gonna contain both the guide and the canvas. So we can make a new div here with an ID of guide and then down below it, we can make a new canvas here with a width of 450 as well as a height of 450 and lastly an ID of canvas. So we're gonna come back to the guide towards the end of this video here. So for the majority of it, the guide isn't going to be worked on or considered. Okay. So we have this first div here to wrap both of the guide and the canvas dropping down below. We can now make a second div and this one here is going to contain the color input field. So we can make a new label here for the element. I'm going to call this element color input. Label is gonna be set color just like that. Then I can drop down, make a second input field or uh, make, a, make an input field here with a type of color. And this right here with the type of color, I can now give it an ID and it must match what I've put in the for attribute above. That way they are linked together, the label and the input field. And just by having a type of color here, if I go back in the browser, we get this right here. So we have that 450 by 450 canvas and we have the input field down here. So very straightforward. I can now hop back inside here and make a second div. This one is gonna have a label for toggle guide and it's gonna be that toggle guide checkbox. So I can just copy this and paste it down here and I'll just say show guide. Now, this input type is gonna be checkbox like I just mentioned and by default, it is going to be checked. So this right here is all we need when it comes to the HTML for this pixel art canvas. If I go back in the browser, we get this right here. Now I did actually forget the clear button. So let's add that clear button in. Uh, back inside here now make a third div and we're gonna make this a simple button Okay with a type of button and of course an ID of clear Clear button and a label of simply just clear so I'll save this and we're done with the HTML We get something like this. All right, so Let's now head inside the CSS and apply one very simple rule. We're gonna go and target the canvas, gonna give this a cursor of pointer, that way the user knows um, they can actually click on the canvas here to do something. So the cursor has changed from this pointer or this default to a cursor just like that or um, a pointer just like that. All right, 
Now we can begin on the JavaScript, all right? So when it comes to the JavaScript, we're gonna be defining all of the elements first using uh, get element by ID. Then we're gonna be defining all of the main functions that make our, uh, our pixel art canvas work. And then finally, we're gonna be defining those event handlers and tie them to those functions. So let's begin by making a new constant here called canvas equal to document.getElementById ID and pass through here the ID of canvas. We can do the exact same thing a few more times. Uh, the second one here is gonna be for the guide, like I said, more on that later on. The third one is gonna be for the color input. The fourth one is gonna be for the clear button. And the fifth one is going to be for uh, that toggle guide checkbox, okay? Now you may wish to put this one down here just to, I guess, follow suit with what we've got in the HTML. But either way, we have these five uh, elements inside JavaScript. Now, a handy tip is gonna be to use JS doc on the canvas here. So we'll put asterisk or mom's like forward slash asterisk asterisk then drop down here and say at type and make this HTML uh, canvas elements just like this with the capital C and capital E. By doing this in VS Code, we're now gonna get uh, type hinting and autocompletes for this uh, constant right here, which means if I drop down, I can say const drawing context equal to, and I can say canvas.getContext, and we can see we get that autocomplete for that method there, and I can pass in something like 2D just like that. And that right there is your benefit of having this type. Now, you're also gonna get drawing context dot and you have access to all of those methods. So like I said, I like to use that type for the HTML5 canvas. Now, one more quick thing to mention is of course, I'm using a constant called drawing context. This is commonly seen as simply just CTX in other tutorials online, but right here, I wanna be a little bit more specific. Okay, we have all of the elements selected. We can now drop down and define some more constants about um, the grid uh, of the canvas itself. So, you know, what is the user able to click on? Well, we're gonna say here, const cell side count equal to five. Now, uh, this is probably, you know, not the best name, but this just tells us how many cells or how many squares are on each side on the X axis and the Y axis. So in the case of uh, you know this example right here, I used a number of 10 because there are 10 cells going that way and 10 going uh, down here. So 10 cells on the side, that is the cell side count. I'm gonna drop this down to five so we can actually see the squares a little bit better, okay? Gonna also say here const cell pixel length is equal to, and we're gonna be using the canvas width to calculate how long or how wide these cells should be. We'll say canvas dot width divided by five, or my mistake, divided by cell side count. So as an example, if your canvas width is 1000, 1000 divided by five is gonna be 200. So every single square or cell is gonna be 200 by 200 pixels uh, wide. Okay, cool. Now, a third constant is going to be uh, called color history. So more on this later on, but this object right here just tells us which colors were used for a given X and Y coordinate. Okay, so like I said, more on that later on. Now, we're gonna also define a default color for the uh, pixel art canvas. So I'll say here, set default color. We're gonna head back into the browser very shortly uh, to see our progress, but I'll say here, color input dot value equal to, then set a default of the decode green color 009578, just like that. I'll save this, go back in the browser, and we get something like this. So we can see we have that green color set in the input, uh, which means our JavaScript is working perfectly fine. All right, great, let's drop down here and set, or uh, let's let's initialize uh, the canvas background color. So I'll spell initialize correctly here, initialize, there we go. So we need to set the canvas to have a default white background. 
We can do this by saying drawing context dot fill style equal to and make this simply just white. Then say drawing context dot fill rect at zero and zero, the top left corner. Then say canvas dot width and then canvas dot height for the length of the rectangle. Of course, by providing the canvas width and height, it's gonna take up the entire uh, area of the canvas. So now if I save this, go back in the browser, we're gonna get a square of the entire canvas background. So the canvas is now set up. We can now move on to defining those functions. So which functions are going to control this project and the user interactivity and so on? Well, the first one here is going to be called function handle canvas mouse down. So whenever the user decides to mouse down or click on the canvas, this function is going to run. The next one is going to be function handle clear button click. And this one here, as the name suggests, is going to run whenever the user clicks on the clear button. Now notice here, I don't actually uh, use the E event object because we don't need to use the event object in this case, but for the mouse down, we need to access the X and Y coordinates of the user's mouse to figure out where we need to draw a square. So that's why I use the event object right up here, but not down here. The next function is going to be called handle, oops, my mistake, let's type that correctly. Function handle toggle guide change. And once again, this right here, as the name suggests, is going to be the event handler for that checkbox to toggle the guide. And the last function here is going to be called fill cell at uh, the cell X and the cell Y. So if you were to call fill cell at, at x0 and uh, y0, this right here is going to fill up uh, the cell in the top left corner. If you provide an x of 4 and a y of 3, it's going to fill the cell that is 5 from the right or 5 from the left and then 4 down the bottom or from the top. So it's going to be using zero based indexes. More on this very shortly, okay, but We've defined the function right here. It's going to take your color as well. So more on this later on. Now we have the functions defined. We can now set up those events. So we'll say here canvas dot add event listener when the user mouse or when they, you know, mouse down on the canvas, we're going to say handle canvas mouse down. Then do the exact same thing now for the clear button. When the user clicks on the clear button, we're going to handle clear button click. Very straightforward. And the same goes for the toggle guide. We can now say change this time around and say handle toggle guide change. Okay, cool. So we have all of the functions defined, all of the events defined. We can now go ahead and implement these functions to, of course, complete this pixel art canvas. So the very first function to implement here is going to be the fill cell. Okay, so how do we go about doing this? Well, let's first begin by simply saying drawing context dot fill style. And we're going to set the fill style or the fill color to be whatever's inside that color input field. So we'll say color input dot value just like that. We can now also say drawing context dot fill rect and we can create that square. In this case here, just for an example, I wanna put at index or at x zero and then y zero, then just say something like 100 and then 100. If I was to now save this, go back in the browser, I can now call the fill cell method, just like this. And I'll say here zero and then zero, I'll press enter and we get that in the top left corner. So it's just a simple 100 pixel by 100 pixel rectangle. So now of course we need to populate these values with the actual things it should be. If I was to click somewhere else, I wanted to populate that rectangle and not the other one. So how do we do this? Well, we need to first figure out where this rectangle or this square, should I say, is going to begin on the canvas. So we can say here, const start x is equal to, then we'll say cell x times the cell pixel length, okay? So 
the start x is going to be what gets passed into the fill rex method in the first argument. We can drop down again and uh, make this a start y. It's going to be the cell y. So if, for example, you say fill cell at 1 and then 2, it's going to be, in this case here, whatever the cell pixel length is, okay, it's going to give you a number. So as an example, if your canvas is 500 in canvas width, then it's going to be, you know, uh, 100 pixels per cell. So five cells, 100 pixels. Then we say, you know, one times 100, it's going to start offset by 100. Then we can say cell Y, so 2 times 100, it's going to be offset 200 down. So that's what we're doing there with that uh, star X and star Y. We can now paste that inside there and then for our values right here, we're going to simply say cell pixel length, just like that. Now, I want to save this, go back in the browser. I now want to find out what the cell pixel length actually is. I'll say cell pixel length and we get 90. So every single square is 90 by 90. Let's now call fill cell index 00, press enter and we get that right there. Let's now say one and then zero. Do it again and we get that right there. So we're offsetting by 90 pixels each time using that start X and the same goes for the start Y. So that is the fill cell method. The very last thing to do here is remember which color we used at this particular X and Y coordinate. We can do this using the color history object and we're going to pass in here using a dynamic uh, uh, object key here and we can use template strings then just say dollar sign uh, curly brace and we can just simply say cell X underscore then the same thing dollar sign curly brace for cell Y is equal to color inputs dot value. So now if I save this, go back in the browser, I'm going to call fill cell index one zero. Then I'll take a look at the color history and we get one zero equal to this green. OK, if I make this now, you know, this orange color, I do it again, fill cell this time index four down here, we get one four is going to be that color. So we have the color history saved. It's going to help us out later on when we're trying to control click to save the current color. All right, let's go back inside here now. We are done with the fill cell function. Let's now move on to one of the most important functions, the handle canvas mouse down. So for this one, when the user mouses down on the canvas, we're going to first check that they're using their primary uh, button on the mouse. So if you're right-handed, it's going to be the left button. If you're left-handed, it's going to be the right button. So we're going to say if e dot button does not equal zero, then we're going to say return. So we're going to say here simply just something like, you know, uh, ensure user is using their primary mouse button because if the user uses a right click or the scroll button we don't want that to trigger of course a fill color or fill cell on that particular cell okay let's drop down here now and now we need to find out based on where the user clicked which particular cell they want to fill up so we're going to get these pixel values it might be, you know, up to 500 in pixel values, so X and Y, but that number or those numbers need to be converted into the simplified whole numbers of, you know, 0 and 1 or 0 and 2 and so on. So we can do this using the uh, get bounding client rect function. So we'll say here, const canvas bounding rect is equal to canvas dot get bounding client rect. So this object here is going to tell us information about the canvas on the page, uh, giving us things like its top, its left, its right, um, its relativity in pixels compared to the viewport. So I'll now say here console.log canvas bounding rect just to inspect this particular object here. Go back in the browser, mouse down on the canvas, and we get this right here. So we can see the width of the canvas, the height of the canvas, we can see it's left position, so 8 pixels from the left of the screen, 
eight pixels from the top of the screen and so on. So you can use this data to figure out where the user clicked on the actual canvas. So to achieve that, we can simply say const x is equal to e dot client x minus canvas bounding rect dot left. Now, a very similar situation for the y, this time saying client y equal to canvas bounding rect dot top. So now we have the x and y of the actual mouse in pixels. If I console.log the x and y, save this back in the browser, click on the canvas, 4, 2, 8, and 32. If I click in the top left corner of the canvas, we get 0 and 1. Bottom right corner, we get 448, 448. So we're almost maxing out on those pixel values. So we have these numbers. Let's now convert them into those simplified whole numbers, 0, 1, 1, 4, whatever it might be. All right, cool. Going back inside here, in order to convert that into our whole numbers, we can say const cell x equal to math.floor. We're going to floor the results of x divided by the cell pixel length to calculate that, uh, that whole number. Exact same thing for the y, this time of course, saying y divided by cell pixel length. And now we have our x and y. We can now simply call the fill cell method and we can, or sorry, function and pass in there the cell X and the cell Y. I can now save this, go back in the browser here, click in the top right corner and it fills up. I can do it again and our pixel art canvas is almost there. So we have the clicking working, all right? We can now move on to uh, getting some of these input fields down below working, namely the show guide and the clear. So like I said at the uh, beginning of today's video, we're going to be worrying about the guide towards the end. So let's quickly get the clear button out of the way. So when the user clicks on the clear button, we're going to quickly check that they actually intended to clear the canvas. So we'll say const yes is equal to confirm. We're going to say, are you sure? Are you sure you wish to clear the canvas? Okay, if that's the case, then we can continue. But we can check if the user did not say yes. If they said no, they, they're not sure, so they want to back out basically. We can just return. Otherwise, we can move forward. We're going to simply copy and paste the code from the initialization and put it inside the, uh, the function. So we're simply setting a white background on the canvas. Now, you probably could have, you know, or I probably could have put this code in some sort of function instead of repeating it twice, but it's only two lines. So now that's, that's probably fine. But anyway, uh, we now have the clear button working. So if I go back in the browser, I'll make some paintings or whatever I want to do. I now say clear. If I say cancel, nothing happens. If I clear again and say, okay, we can see the canvas is cleared. Okay. How do we go about getting that guide in? Well, there is one thing I forgot to do, and that was the actual ability to uh, pick up on an existing color when you press control click. So if I choose something like a red here and do something like this, if I want to get this green back, I want to say control click to get the green. And I don't want it to override my green from before. So how do we get this to work? Well, if I go back inside the, uh, uh, the handle canvas mouse down function here, we're going to check if we previously used a color on the intended cell. So that's going to use the color history object. Let's say const current or yeah, current color is equal to here, the color history, then just simply copy and paste the same key that we used down below in the fill cell. So this one right here. I'll copy that and put it right up here. So that is the current color. Uh, okay, I need to use my back ticks here. So current color can either be undefined, so it's the first time the user is clicking on this particular cell, or it can contain a previous color. So if that's the case, and they're pressing the control key, we want it to 
use or update that color input to now use that color instead. So we'll say here, if E dot control key, okay, because remember this event object is a mouse event. So you have access to things like control key. So if this is true, it means the user held control when they clicked on your canvas. If that's the case, we can also say, okay, cool. If there is a current color, then we can simply update the color input. We'll say color input dot value equal to the current color of that particular cell. Otherwise, if they didn't use the control key, then we can simply uh, have the same code as earlier on and we can simply fill that cell. Back in the browser now, I'll make a few adjustments to my canvas. I'll make it red. If I was to control click on the green square, it's not going to change. And of course, the color is updated and I can reuse that color from earlier on. So the main components or the main functionality of the canvas is done. We can now finally move on to that guide. Now, when it comes to the guide, it's going to be using CSS grid to simply overlay the canvas. So we're going to begin inside the CSS file. We can target the ID of guide. Okay. Then we can use a display of grid. All right. We're also going to give this a position of absolute, just like this, and a border of one pixel solid RGBA 0, 0, 0, and then 0 0.1. So a 10% uh, opaque black border, all right? Cool. Now, in order to make this CSS grid look like a grid with those cells, it needs to have uh, actual child elements inside here so a bunch of divs inside here in order to you know represent every single possible sort of uh you know item there okay so we need to generate these divs using javascript before we do that i just want to apply some styles to those squares or those cells okay so we'll say guide then we can say div and we'll just say here border one pixel solid RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.1. All right. So the usage of position absolute is so that the guide can overlay the canvas. Okay. I can show you this right now. So if I go inside the main.js, we need to set the width and height of the guide as well as defining the rows and columns. All right, so let's go underneath this initialize uh, canvas background section and we'll simply uh, create a new block of code here to set up the guide. So the very first step here is gonna be to set the guides width and height. We'll say guide.style.width equal to the exact same thing as the canvas. We'll say using template strings once again, simply just this value then px very important and we'll say canvas dot width and then add px exact same thing for the height canvas dot height then px all right i'll save this go back in the browser now i'll inspect the guide and we can see it's taken up the full width and height of the canvas the problem is if i was to click on the guide the canvas is now broken because the guide overlays the canvas. To get around this problem, we can simply set pointer events equal to none on the guide. And this right here is going to disable any event listeners and it's going to fall back through into the canvas. I'll save this, go back in the browser and it's working again. And we have the guide visible. All right. So now the last few steps here of this guide is going to be to set the uh, the columns and the rows. So five by five in this case using JavaScript and also setting up uh, every single div inside of it. So let's hop down here. We can say guide.style.grid template columns. If you've used CSS grid before, you're going to know what these things mean. If not, basically we're setting the columns of the grid. So we'll say here, the columns are going to be five, five columns, right? So we'll say repeat, then using template strings, once again, dollar sign curly braces, 
cell side count, or in this case here, five, then say comma one FR, so five equal width columns. Exact same thing for grid template rows here, okay? Uh, cell side count one FR. All right, now the very last step is gonna be to populate the guide with the divs, that way the squares can begin to show. We can do this using a bit of a trick here, using the array spread operator, just or spread syntax. And we can say array and make a new array, which is gonna be the cell side count squared. So we need 25 cells on the grid, five by five, right? So we'll say here, cell side count to the power of two. Then we'll say for each, so basically 25 times, we're gonna run this code and this code is going to simply say guide.insert adjacent HTML. I'll minimize the sidebar real quick. We're gonna be inserting some HTML before the end of the guide. And this will simply just be a new div just like that. So basically appending this HTML to the guide. If I save this, go back in the browser, we get this right here. So it is working. If I was to inspect the guide here, we have 25 of the divs which were generated using JavaScript. And of course we have the styling and so on. We have that, you know, template columns, template rows. And now the pixel art canvas is complete. Well, mostly the last thing to do is gonna be to implement this show guide checkbox. So let's do that really quickly now by going inside the handle toggle guide change function. And this right here is gonna be extremely simple. We're gonna say guide.style.display is gonna be equal to, now we're gonna say if the toggle guide is checked, okay, we'll say null, otherwise we'll say none. So this right here, when you have checked the toggle guide checkbox, it's going to remove any inline styling set by JavaScript and fall back to the, uh, to the CSS, which is display of grid. Otherwise, it's going to set a display of none, effectively hiding the uh, guide. Back in the browser, I click on show guide and it goes away. Canvas still works, do it again. And, it's, and of course, it stays there. So... That right there is the code for the pixel art canvas. And that is all for today's video guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.